Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Eastern Lifestyle. I'm your host, Davia Pugh. And I'm your reporter, Kaylee Riccatelli. Thank you so much for being with us today. We have such an exciting show ahead. We'll learn about one of the best-selling and highest-rated car scan tools available. Plus, find out how to get an amazing deal when you dine at this great ENC restaurant. And that's all coming up very shortly. But now it's time to get into what makes this day so special. So, Kaylee, start us off. So today is National Easy Bake Oven Day. Oh my gosh, I used to have one. I loved I, it. I'm pretty sure I did too. Mm -hmm. So You're easy, pretty sure? <laughs> yes, I'm, I remember having one. Okay. But I also had a couple of different like food candy maker toy things. Gotcha. Um, so I, I think an Easy Bake Oven was one of them. But Easy Bake Ovens were invented in 1963 by uh, Ronald Howes and they were powered by 200 watt light bulbs mm. when they were first invented. Then over the years, it went down to 160 watt light bulb, and they added a heating element instead of a light bulb, and it kind of evolved into what it is today. And it was inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame in 2006. Wow, that's amazing. I really loved my Easy Bake Oven. Like, I felt like a chef. No, literally. I, I felt like, and my favorite thing to make was probably desserts. Mm -hmm. That was my, my go-to. See, I think, I think the one that I, had either came with chocolate chip cookie mix Mine did too. or brownie mix. I can't remember. It was, yeah. I can't it was, remember which one of those it was. I don't remember either, but it was, I, I think I made both. Yeah. But one of them did come with one of the other. Yeah. Either cookies or brownies. But either way, it was so easy to make too. It only required like water or something. Yeah, it was like, like water. I think you might might have put like olive oil. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of olive oil, stir it, and there you go. And they, Honestly, were they the best? No. Exactly. Did you make them yourself? Yes. Yes, <laughs> and it was good at that time because we didn't know any better. Exactly. So um, today is also um, National Candy Day. Ooh. National what? Candy Sweet Day. Sweet Tooth kind of day. Sweet Tooth kind of day. <laughs> um, I love, you know, I'm not a huge candy person, but um, when I do eat candy, I would say my favorite is like those um, sour gummy worms or nerd, those chewy little nerd balls. Gummy clusters. Gummy clusters, <gasps> those are really good. Oh my gosh. I think yeah. those are some of my favorites. I see, but between, I don't know if I like chocolate candy or like fruity sour candy more. I prefer chocolate candy more. Because I have my favorites between the two. Mm -hmm. But um, I like like the peach rings. Peach rings are so good. And um, the Airheads Extremes. Ooh, Airheads are really good. I those, forgot about Airheads. Yeah. Like like the the regular airheads, I have to be in like a mood for mm -hmm. because sometimes they're just too chewy. Taffy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like Laffy Taffy but kind of. The extremes are like the long ones that just come in the really thin strips yes. and they're easy to Those, off. yes. Oh my gosh, and yes. they're so good. Yes. <laughs> and so like candy itself, it's said that Americans consume like 25 pounds of candy a year. Are you serious? Yeah, and Reese's is actually a top choice for Americans, which is, I'm not surprised. I mean, Reese's and peanut, like chocolate and peanut butter is such a great combination. Yeah. Can't go wrong. And Reese's are just like, like there's not much to them. It's They're not. They're simple. It's simple. just chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah. There's not a whole bunch of peanut butter. Yeah. It's just enough. And exactly. So good. I so think, good. I think Reese's are like at least top five, maybe top. Mm -hmm. I would say Snickers if I had to choose a chocolate, but one that I really strongly dislike, candy okay. I really strongly dislike is Twizzlers. I can't <gasps> stand them. I love I, Twizzlers. I can't stand them. I just don't, I've never liked them when I eat them. When I was growing up, they taste just like plastic. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like the licorice flavor, but like gotcha. the classic like red Twizzler, that's my movie snack. No, I, I, I can't. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> And you know where you all can enjoy some candy this week? At the ECU Pirates basketball games, Ooh. which is so exciting. So the season kicks off this week. Um, the first game is with the men's that play West Leon at 7 p.m. tonight, and the women play Charleston Southern on Wednesday at 6. So be sure to check out their website for more information and just show the Pirates some support. Like, awesome! Yeah, that's exciting. Basketball's awesome. Have, have you ever been to a basketball game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you? <gasps> yes, I have. Okay. Plenty. Okay. My brother played basketball, so. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So at the start of our shows, we want to connect with you guys. If you captured awesome moments showing the best of what ENC has to offer that you'd like Kaylee and I to react to, share, or know, just scan the QR code, fill out the quick form, and send us your pics and bits. Coming up after the break, we're diving into a must-have device that helps you understand what's really happening with your car. 
You won't want to miss it. Buying a used car has become more of a risk than ever before. Sellers in dealerships are getting better and better at hiding serious issues that could cost you thousands of dollars in repair. Many buyers are misled into thinking a clean history report means a reliable car, but those reports don't tell you the working condition of the vehicle. You'll buy that car not knowing you might be on the hook for those repairs, but what if we told you about a product that will protect you from falling victim to these scams? It's called Fixed. It's an affordable new tool that reveals any hidden mechanical issues in just seconds. With Fixed, you won't have to rely on a seller's claims. You'll know the car's true condition before signing any papers. Fixed will scan your car for problems and send that information directly to your phone. For example, even if the check engine light has been turned off, Fix will still detect the problem. Not only does Fix find issues, but it also gives you a breakdown of the repair cost and suggests how much you should pay for that car. This gives you more negotiating power to ensure you're always getting the best price. And Fix keeps working after you buy, offering ongoing reminders for future maintenance, such as oil changes, tire rotations, or other key services continuously saving you money on servicing and unexpected repairs. Fixed has over 50,000 five-star reviews and a 4.6-star rating on the App Store. It is now one of the best-selling and highest-rated car scan tools available. Fixed is quickly becoming this year's hottest gift. In addition, it's 67% off on their website, bringing the price down to just $20. To learn more about Fixed, head to their website, fixed.com. We want to thank IBH Media for sponsoring this segment. So now it's time for a quick draw where we draw something in 30 seconds or less. I'm gonna go first and then Kaylee's gonna go. So Kaylee, what am I drawing? You are going to draw a palm tree. Oh, fun. I love are palm trees. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one, go. Okay. <laughs> okay, I see what you're doing. Yes, I'm trying to hurry up. <laughs> and 15 seconds, we're halfway there. <laughs> Ooh. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. <laughs> okay, wait, I, I love that. I tried, okay. That's yeah. That's a pretty good palm tree for 30 seconds. Thank you. I loved drawing palm trees when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. All right, so now it's Kaylee's turn. I'm ready. What am I drawing today? You're going to draw a cat. A cat. Yeah. Okay. You got 30 seconds now. <laughs> Cats are your favorite animal, right? I do love cats. Yeah. I don't know if they're my favorite. They're honestly kind of tied with dogs. I oh. like each one for, you know, its own special reason. Love that. Oh, those ears are so uneven. That's don't worry horrific. about it. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, my word. Okay. <laughs> and now let's see if I can do a body Five seconds. here. <gasps> We're going to do a tail. Oh, that's a fat Stop. tail. Ah! Oh, no! Oh, no! Cute! He has a fat tail and one foot. Okay, so here's... Here's the cat. Love. Um, we didn't get completely done. Yeah. But you know, I think that's what makes him unique. I think that one was foot fun. and a big old tail.
Ahoy mateys! Coming up on Eastern Lifestyle, we're dropping anchor in a small town with an infamous history. The town of Bath was the first incorporated town in North Carolina. It's home to the state's first public library, first marine port, and St. Thomas Church, the oldest standing church in North Carolina. Bath was a site for an American Indian settlement many, many centuries ago, all the way uh, up through the uh, recorded history. In the 17th or early 18th century is when we first get Bath incorporated. So Bath is the first incorporated town in North Carolina. It doesn't mean it was the first town. There were other settlements in this area before that but it, it's the first settlement to become officially a town, and so that's one of its claims to fame. This building was the 1921 school. There have been other schools in Bath's history. Uh, this particular structure was built in 1921. It was expanded after that and became the primary school in Bath up through the 1980s. It was closed in 1989, uh, was falling into some disrepair, and several local entities kind of banded together to help bring this building back to a usable state. Uh, the complex now holds the local library, it holds Pirate Hall, other uh, businesses, and of course our exhibit, which we opened in December of, of 2022. It's a great exhibit that kind of looks through Bath's history up through the 20th century. We have, of course, the incorporations and, and the kind of early establishment of Bath, but as you progress through the exhibit, you learn more about the homes in this area, you know, the building of the bridges in the 1880s. They built those bridges and you see a big boom in Bath's construction. A lot of the homes here actually post-date the 1880s because that's when you start getting a lot of people coming to the area. Uh, before we had the exhibit, people would come to the site and primarily they would get to watch a, a short orientation film, they might see a small exhibit, and then they'd be able to tour our historic houses and take the walking tour. Awesome things to do, but they didn't really give an overarching feel to the history of the, the town. So now when they come to visit, one of the first things they can do is tour our exhibit and get a, a really good grasp of why Bath is still here, why it's important to North Carolina history before they then go out to explore the town and learn even more. After walking through the historic Bath exhibit myself, I headed out to see the rest of the town. With a population of around 250 people, Bath is easy to drive through. I first looked at the Vanderveer House, which sits right across the street from the complex that houses the State Historic Site, Pirate Hall, and the local library. Then, I ventured over to Main Street. Bath is probably most well known for its ties to Blackbeard, the infamous pirate who is believed to have lived here for a short time in the early 18th century. Blackbeard, whose real name is believed to have been Edward Teach, is said to have lived in the area from 1717 to 1718. His boat, a French slave ship he and his crew hijacked and claimed, and renamed Queen Anne's Revenge. After blockading a port in Charleston, South Carolina in early 1718, Blackbeard returned to North Carolina and accepted a pardon from the governor in Bath. Not long after that, Queen Anne's Revenge ran aground, and in November of 1718, Blackbeard was killed by a Virginian fleet at Ocracoke Island. A commemorative sign for Blackbeard can be found at Bonner Point, which was my first stop after leaving the historic site. I took in the breathtaking view and the Bonner home for a bit before proceeding to St. Thomas Church, the oldest standing church in the state. The door is usually open, so I took a quick peek inside after walking the grounds. Last but not least, I checked out one more historic house on my way out of town. If you want to soak up some of Bath's history for yourself, you can call or go online ahead of your visit to get more information and to schedule a tour at one of their historic homes, like the Palmer Marsh House behind me. so cool. Yes, it was amazing. So was yours. <laughs> Thank you. Very I cool. had a great time. I did too. <laughs> that was really fun. All right, so now it's time for the life hack of the day. Did you know to clean your rusty tools easily, you can use vinegar? 
you just simply fill a large container um, that fits the tools with vinegar and then let the tools soak long enough for the rust to be leached out. And then you just scrub and dry them with the cloth. I did not know vinegar could do that. I didn't either. I know vinegar is strong, but not that strong. That's, that's impressive. That is impressive. <laughs> Up next is a great opportunity for great savings at one of the best DNC restaurants. But before that, let's get into trivia. So let's see if you get this question right. So, the Nicholas Sparks movie, A Walk to Remember, was set in Charleston, South Carolina. Is it A, true, or B, false? We'll have that answer right after the break. Stay with us. Coming up after the break, learn how to get a great dining deal here at Gorm's Cafe and enjoy some mouth-watering soul food. Stay with us. All right, we're back. So if you guessed B, false, you are right. The movie A Walk to Remember was actually set in New Bern, North Carolina. This segment is sponsored by Gorham's Cafe. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Davia, and it's time for Be Our Guest, where we help you save money while having an amazing dining experience. Today, we are at Gorham's Cafe in Farmville. Be sure to go to WNCT.com, find the Be Our Guest tab to get your $50 certificate for only $25 because they will sell out fast. We are here with Ernest Gorm, the owner of Gorm Cafe. Thank hey, you so you? much for having us. Hey, how you doing? Doing good, how are you? Doing good. <laughs> good. This all looks so amazing. I cannot wait to talk about it. So let's start with the chicken wings over here. Uh, chicken wings are a good seller for us. Um, it's quick, easy and uh, it's low cost, so it's seasoned really well, and um, it goes good with the, the seasoned fries, and, and, and it's got a good crunch to it. Awesome, awesome. And now we have this steak. Steak, <laughs> ribeye steak yes. is what we normally use for our steak, and it's, we paired it with asparagus. Now we have this shrimp dish. Oh, shrimp. Love shrimp. shrimp. <laughs> is for, yeah, everybody loves shrimp. <laughs> so shrimp is normally served every day, um, but it's, we do steak and shrimp on Thursday, so it, we're doing it today with the baked potato and uh, green beans. Okay, awesome. And your menu changes weekly? Or changes depending on weekly, the day? Okay. A day, and you know, sometimes I switch it up some for them, but awesome, it, awesome. You know, it changes. Moving on to this great looking dish. Uh, the <laughs> baked spaghetti, uh, We that's topped with some cheese, so we put it in the oven, bake it for a good hour, and, and we paired it with the salad, which is, goes really well with the spaghetti, or you could use baked potato. Uh, you could choose any side that you will want with that item, but baked spaghetti is a good seller for us. It looks so good, I love yeah. cheese. Mm -hmm. I do too, I love cheese. <laughs> now moving on to our last dish. Um, yeah, so we sell a lot of barbecue, but we, we tapped into the turkey barbecue and a lot of people love the turkey barbecue for the health reasons and it's a little bit leaner meat. Uh, we paired it with um, slaw, mac and cheese, and some cabbage, and some hush puppies. Great, that looks fantastic as well. They thank all you, do. <laughs> thank you, all that looks good. Yeah. Um, we we kind of do some of everything, and uh, we also uh, have different items, our everyday items, if you don't want to have any of the the dine-in part of it. And, um, and if you don't even want the everyday items, we also offer catering. So. If y'all need any catering done, we are here for you guys at any time. We do offer um, other things like oxtails, we do the turkey wings, uh, we also do hamburger steak, chicken and pastry. Those are some of the other items that we offer throughout the week. Awesome, and I hear you guys have a great Sunday buffet. <laughs> yes, we got people coming from all over on Sundays for our buffet. Uh, we generally start the buffet from 11 to 4. Our, our hours are from 11 to 9, Wednesday through Saturday. Um, and then Saturday, we also offer breakfast also on Saturdays. Okay. Um, but if y'all want to come by, we are at 3776 West Wilson Street here in Farmville. Uh, please stop by at any time. We can give y'all anything that y'all may want or need. Or if you got any questions, try to find me as much as you can. But I will be in the kitchen cooking <laughs> your meals. Awesome, awesome. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share, Ernest, about Gorm's Cafe? Yes, um, y'all guys, don't forget about Sunday Buffet. It's only on Sundays. Um, make sure you are here, because we got people from all over coming. 
Fayetteville, Wilson, the surrounding areas, not just Farmville. So y'all please come, please call us at 252-814-4366. Thank you so much, Ernest. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> and you all remember, make sure to go to WNCT.com, find the VR guest tab to get your, your $50 certificate for only $25 because these will sell out fast. Yes. yes. This segment is sponsored by Gorham's Cafe. Eastern Lifestyle is your ultimate 30-minute guide to the best of Eastern North Carolina. Every day, dive into captivating stories of local people, upcoming events, arts, and more. We wouldn't be here without the locals. It's an awesome experience. I think everyone should try it. You can just have a good time. Tune in with me, Davia Pugh. And me, Kaylee Riccatelli, to stay up to date on all things ENC. Watch Eastern Lifestyle. Weekdays at 3 on WNCT 9 on your side. We are so happy that you joined us today. Make sure to share your ENC moments with us by scanning the QR code and always remember to enjoy every moment of your Eastern lifestyle. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 3. Have an awesome day.